Hey folks, Alan Manick, the Hot Rod Hippie here. This week's video, we're gonna be talking about wiring connectors, Deutsch connectors to be specific. These are the connectors that I use when I'm doing big wiring jobs, so let's check it out. Hey you, yeah you, are you subscribed to my channel? YouTube tells me that most of the people who watch my videos aren't subscribed. So go ahead and hit that subscription button down below to keep up to date with the weekly videos. Let's keep going. So lately in my day job, I'm working on a 55 Chevy Bel Air doing a full wiring job. I've been posting it on Instagram daily, showing folks the progress as I made my way through that. I'm gonna wrap that up now. But I had a lot of questions about the actual connectors I was using on the body wiring harness. In this video, we're gonna take a look at these connectors. I'm gonna tell you why I use them, show you some of the tools I use when I'm using them, and demonstrate a little bit of how I put them together. The ones that I use primarily are Deutsch connectors. There are a handful of things that I really like about these. They are easy to connect and disconnect. They clip together and disconnect easily. So when I'm working on a project, I want things to be serviceable. I don't want somebody to have to reach into a tight, hard to reach area, try and disconnect the connection, and find that it's just like half stuck together like some other connectors can be. These just come together and come apart really easily. They're also weather tight. They have gaskets at the back with these big rubber gasketing blocks that the wires and connectors actually slip through. And they have some form of other gasketing on the actual connection side. On this four pin version that I'm showing you here, the gasket is down inside of the female portion of the body. On some other ones, it'll actually be on the male side versus being on the female side. This one just happens to be on the female side of the plug. The actual terminals that go inside of these things are generally a really high quality connection. So they really don't have any trouble carrying certain current loads for larger loads or just being a really good connection for signal wires, things that need to have a good connection but might not have a large amperage draw. There are two types of terminals that work with these things generally. There are open barrel and closed barrel. What I'm showing you here are the closed barrel ones. These have a really nice all encompassing design. They don't have to, any fiddly parts, some nice thin sheet metal to work with. No, these are much stronger. I really like that about these. And also they crimp on really nice and tight uniformly around the wire. The open barrel ones are good and they're probably what you're more familiar with when you're talking about terminal ends for wiring. If you ever worked with weather pack connectors, they're a lot more like that. They have two different crimp points. They have the crimp that actually crimps down on the conductor and the crimp that actually crimps down onto the insulation to hold the terminal to the wire. The connectors go together and come apart pretty easily. Once you have the wire crimped with the terminal, which I will get to in a few moments, but once you have that done, it's pretty easy. All you have to do is slip the wire, the terminal, through this rubber block at the back, the ceiling block that's already installed in the connector, and it actually reaches down into the connector and reaches a point where an internal clip will hold the terminal in place and keep it from backing out. Once you have the terminal and wire fed through and clipped into place into the actual connector, there's actually these wedges as well. The wedges are a secondary mechanical lock that keeps that clip from coming undone to hold the terminal in place in the connector. These are really straightforward and these are where these little precision pliers come in a lot of handy. You just have to grip onto the wedge and stick it down into the connector to go ahead and hold it in place. They fit really nicely in there. They hold the terminals in place so that they're both properly aligned with each other, the male and the female sides of the pins. And they also lock the clips in place so that the terminals just can't slide back out. Disassembly is as simple as taking a screwdriver, generally a pocket flathead screwdriver works really well for this. Stick it down in there, pull the terminal to the side, and you can pull the wire back out through the rubber grommet. I like the ease of disassembly for a couple of really important reasons. It allows me to go ahead and feed the wires through either a loom or a grommet when not having to deal with the connector. Maybe you wanna go ahead and stick a wire through your firewall and you have a, a small hole existing there already. You can fit a grommet into it, the wire will fit through it, but the connector won't fit through it. I think we all run into this from time to time. And then you end up putting a much larger grommet in just so you can slip the connector through there and you end up with a wire going through a much larger grommet than it needs to be through. With this simple design, you can easily disassemble the connector, feed the wires through and reassemble the connector on the other side of the grommet so that you are working with a much cleaner overall finish. As far as the tools are concerned when it comes to Deutsch connectors, most of them are pretty simple. A good screwdriver and a good pair of these like smaller precision pliers are really all you need for assembling the connectors once the terminals are crimped onto the wire. 
The crimping is where you need specialty tools, usually. There's the open barrel type crimper for the open barrel terminals. It's a double roll design, meaning it has those two little like W shape ends to it that actually roll the terminal in onto the actual wire and the insulation for the wire to really grip into there. The open barrel crimpers that I have from Tool Aid are some of my absolute favorite crimpers I have. I use them when I'm working with both the Deutsch connectors, the weather pack connectors, and also the GM specific connectors for like EFI wiring harnesses. I forget the name of those, crimp those terminal ends offhand. I'll, I'll try and throw it here once I look it up. Now the other type of crimper is the closed barrel type crimper. These things are beautiful and I really enjoy working with them. I like them because they crimp uniformly around the terminal. When you're working with that closed barrel type crimper, it actually crimps at four different points. You can see here as this ratchets inward, it is a ratcheting type crimper. As it goes in, it squeezes in four different points come together to squeeze that closed barrel type terminal in onto the conductor of the wire. The only downside here is you need specific size closed barrel crimpers for each size of terminal you're working with. I have 12 gauge ones, I have 20 gauge ones, I have 14 gauge ones. You need the specific size ones for the specific size of closed barrel terminal you are working with. So in my case, that means I have three different sets of the closed barrel type crimpers, and there are two bigger sizes that I haven't gotten around to buying yet because they're a couple hundred dollars, even for the tool aid versions. That is the hurdle when it comes to working with Deutsch connectors is you do have to invest in proper tools to get the job done right so that you can crimp the terminals onto the wires so you can assemble them. Assembling the connectors doesn't require anything special. It's all about terminal crimping when it comes to these connectors. I have this set from Tool Aid that comes with two of the closed barrel type crimpers. It's got the 20, 22 gauge terminal crimper and the 14, 16 gauge closed crimper in there. And it came with those open barrel crimpers that I really like. This set is pretty affordable. Honestly, if I remember right, that set actually cost me about the same price as the 12 gauge closed barrel crimpers alone cost me. So that's a really good set to get when you're getting into working with Deutsch connectors. All of these tools will be linked in the description down below so you can check them out for yourself, see what it is I'm working with, and pick them up if you want to get into working with these connectors. Now also in that set you may notice some terminal tools. Those are specific for when you're working with the type of Deutsch connector that has a more all-encompassing clip that holds the connector together. Those are specifically types like the bulkhead ones that I use. The primary place that I use those bulkhead type connectors is for the front lighting harnesses on cars. I'll pass through the firewall and then I have an easy setup that I can go ahead and have the whole front lighting harness, the headlights, turn signals, the horns, all on one easy to remove harness that just quickly connects with a quick turn connector onto the bulkhead connection of the firewall. This means that I have a really highly serviceable setup and a sealed design. I don't have any place with a grommet with a, a hole that's a little bit too big that allows air and hot air and water and noise to pass through the firewall. I've got a sealed connection, all nice and tidy, clean on that firewall. It's kind of hard for me to break down all of the bulkhead connectors because there are a lot of them. There are some that have tons of tiny little wires, 22 gauge wires passing through there. They might be good for like ECM wiring setups or engine harness setups. Then there are ones that have larger wires, like the ones that I primarily use have like 12 gauge terminal size. They're really good for headlights and turn signals and the slightly larger loads that those circuits might draw. So I'll throw some links in the description down below to companies that are working with Deutsch connectors, especially when it comes to those bulkhead connectors. There's so many options that they can be a little confusing, a little difficult to work with. And that's part of the barrier to entry when you're working with Deutsch connectors is just making sure you get the right parts to go with the right connectors. That is one of the big problems that people have with Deutsch connectors is generally when you're putting them together, you end up buying, say, the male end, the female end, the terminals, and the wedges all separate of each other. I know, say, the folks at Wirecare have configurators on their website so that you can go ahead and pick out what type of connectors you want and how many terminals you need, and they'll put together a little kit specific to the connector that you're working with so that you can get what you need. There are also Deutsch connector kits available. Kits that come with a whole bunch of these, you know, like four pins, two pins, six pins, one pins, all into a big kit and a lot of different terminals in there. Even some of them come with the tools that you'll need when you're working with these as well. So you can pick all of that up in one kit and have it ready to go. They can generally be a couple hundred dollars to get a full kit, but generally one of the larger kits can do a couple of vehicles. So if you have a couple of projects coming up, you can invest in those and know you're gonna have what you need for those coming projects. 
or you can pick up one of the smaller kits that might just do a single vehicle. I love Deutsch connectors. I highly recommend them. I think you should check them out. Like I said, there's gonna be all kinds of links in the description down below to some of the Deutsch connector kits, some of the companies dealing with these products and tools to work with them. So go ahead and check that out at the links in the description down below. And that's gonna do it for this video, folks. Like I said, on Instagram, I was posting a lot of the wiring stuff. So please go ahead and check out the Instagram page so you can keep up to date with what I'm doing on a daily basis. I hope you found this video interesting. If you did, go ahead and drop it a like. Let me know in the comments down below, what do you think about this video? What do you think about these connectors? Are they gonna be useful in your future projects? Let me know in the comments down below. Check out the Patreon account, patreon.com slash hippie. That directly supports this channel so I can buy things like these connectors to show you folks what I'm talking about and get subscribed to keep up to date with all the content every week. Thanks for coming around, folks.